Sonic X Comic Issue 5 After Scarlet Garcia reports about a forest fire with a rare owl threatened by the fire, of course it turns out it was rescued thanks to Sonic. Because if it realistically didn't, that would have been too dark. It's just that it was surprising because Sonic appeared out of nowhere just to save it. And of course, Sonic avoids being hurt by the fire of the forest. And Cream explains that Cheese misses being around other child. Chris relates to Cheese because he knows what it's like to be lonely. Wow, there's a lot of padding in this story. Can we get to the point already? All this Chris past stuff is worthless because it has nothing to do with the Sonic characters. Finally, that padding with the generic kids is over, and we see Eggman petting a chow, and there's some nice continuity as it's revealed that he took a small cutting from Cheese last time he kidnapped him, explaining how he grew his own chow. I really appreciate having continuity. He reveals that he can make a chow evil with the press of a button, and he created an entire chow garden, like, like in his egg care SA1. So he plans to use the chow as his army. We see an advertisement made by Eggman and his robots advertising some chow, and surprisingly, tons of people buy chow from him at that. Because Cream can speak the language of the chow, she warns Sonic that something bad might happen later. Chris's mother says that she's worried about the chow she picked up, and then it turns into a dark chow and throws the sofa at Sonic. I love this idea. Sonic gets a ring and ties up the dark chow, and Tails gets a garbage can, and they tie a rope around the garbage can and get into Chuck's cart to try to go to Angel Island to get some advice, since after all, they first met Chow over there. Then they have to stop the car because it turns out all of the Chow gone crazy and started attacking people. And that's it. This story was by Joe Edkin, and it was about the concept of Dark Chow being taken advantage of properly for the first time ever, because Eggman uses some of Cheese's DNA to make an army of Chow that will turn Dark Chow with the rest of a button. I love this! Maybe he got concentrated Dark Fruit. And it's interesting to see him show a sympathetic side because even he can't resist being nice to cute Chow. I can understand wanting to abuse Chow when you're playing a video game, especially since the Chow Gardens are so boring with literally nothing to do but stand around and wait for a Chow to get hungry. But think about it from their perspective. If you lived in a world with Chow in it, you'd find them to be adorable pets too. Anyone would. But I'm only able to buy the Eggman Gross attached to these Chow because of his design. If he had the menacing design of Robotnik, it'd be the extra little thing that would make me really question it. I'm barely believing in it as it is. This is the same guy who forced Sonic's friends to fight him in brainwashing Mecha so threatened to blow them up with bombs. That's literally just as evil as Fleetway Robotnik, and yet he likes Chow. The problem with the story was that it had a ridiculously high amount of valuable comic space wasted on pointless padding. Chris wastes our time blathering on about his past, and it all started because he can relate to Cheese being lonely. Why couldn't he have just left it at that? Like I assumed. It's not like he's a horrible person. He's a nice kid. But the problem is that he doesn't do anything. He doesn't have any special powers. So he doesn't justify his existence in an action series when he's just a boring, realistic human and that's all. Even in Season 3 of Sonic X, they just made him an engineer, and we already have Tails and Chuck for that. His only real contribution is giving the Sonic characters a place to stay, since they're all trapped in another dimension. And that's nice and all, certainly helps them out because they don't have to pay rent. Or do they? Well, they live in the house of some rich people, so I doubt his parents would have money trouble if they weren't paying the rent. I don't hate Chris since he's not a bad person, but what I hate is the focus on him instead of him being a minor character. I'd rather see Sonic's past than his. So it's because of all of this padding that I have trouble fully classifying this as a good issue. Let alone the best issue in the comic. It's not horrible to read, but because it's about Chris, it's completely uninteresting because it's obvious that none of it matters. He's just in one continuity and doesn't do much. On the bright side, this kind of padding where Chris blathers about his past is just like the Sonic Underground padding. If you don't like it, skip it. Nothing of value happens in it, so you can just skip it just fine. So ultimately, I'd say this was a good issue because of the Chow story. He probably activated their dark Chowness with nanobots in them that activate a part of their genes, forcing them to evolve early in, in a certain alignment after he took care of them and thus influenced them to be dark Chow naturally. 